Why did I become an entrepreneur? That's a very interesting question. Now, I want to tell you, when I first started my work in technology, which was in India in an ordnance factory, learning how to design and manufacture optical instruments, learned that in India, then came to Imperial College in London, primarily to learn about technology at the next level. And a year or two later, I was supposed to go back to India and start my own company. So the idea of having your own business is something that I sort of inherited in me from the very young age. And the interesting thing is that while uh, I was a student at Imperial College, uh, I received the, the scholarship from the Royal Society to do my research in coat fiber optics of those days. And uh, I worked for about a year and a half on trying to make glass fibers and align them in a way so you can show that they can transmit light and images together. Now, as soon as I was able to demonstrate that and publish a number of articles in the first year and a half of my research, I went to my professor to say, basically, what do you think about the work I've done? And he said, well, it's fantastic. Nobody's ever done this thing before. I said, well, I'm glad you like it, but I want to tell you that I have achieved my objective, and now I plan to leave and go back to India and start my own company. He told me at that time, give me two months. And I assumed that what he was going to do is try to find somebody to do the work that I had started. But in fact, what he did was he went to the Senate of the University of London to basically say, hey, this guy has done this development and should be ready to do his PhD now. So two months later, he comes back. He says, I had the meeting with the Senate, and they approved it. Start writing your thesis. So I said to myself, what the hell? You know, I had assumed having a PhD was a negative thing because it makes an egghead out of you. That was my assumption at the time. I wanted to be a practical man in the world and do things. And uh, however, the guy basically did that. And then as I finished my PhD, which was about six months later, so in two years, without any degree other than the bachelor's I had in India, I got my PhD in the University of London. Uh, I was getting ready to go come back to India. And I had actually met Nehru, who wanted me to become the scientific advisor of Ministry of Defense. And that I thought was quite interesting. And in the meantime, I met a professor from University of Rochester at a conference in Florence, Italy, where I presented my first publication, first publication ever in fiber optics. And this professor had lunch with me afterwards and my wife and said, you should come to America. I said, oh, no, no, no. I think I'm ready to go back to India and no, do this, that, and that. And he said, no, I don't think you should do that yet because once you go to India, you will never come back. That was his assumption. So come now, and after a year or two, you can go back. And so I came to University of Rochester as a faculty member. And one year led to another, which led to a job, which immediately got me into entrepreneuring. And instead of starting a company in India, I ended up starting my first company in this area, in, in Palo Alto. <laughs> and took it, started in 1960 and took it public in 1967. And since then, I've had a few other things other companies to work in. So entrepreneurship is something that uh, sort of is ingrown. When I, when I used to teach entrepreneurship at uh, University of California at Santa Cruz, I used to say to the students in the first lecture, I used to say, most of you should never become an entrepreneur because entrepreneurs have these very qualities, some very likable and some not very likable. And some of them, you'll just learn about it and go and do your business. Uh, but those that succeed can get someplace. And fortunately for me, I've been having a lot of fun together. <laughs> so there we are.